I was a communist for the FBI. Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. The story you are about to hear is based on the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic, who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Here is our star, Dana Andrews as Matt Savetic. Nine years of it. Nine years of living behind a mask that made me an outcast among my own people. And from behind that mask, I saw these things happen. It's all in the record. The story and testimony of my nine years as a communist for the FBI. Hi, this is Joe Webb, and I'm here with uh, Carl Amari, who is the producer and host of Hollywood 360. And we're into the third Ziv series that's being transferred from DISC. Uh, I was a communist for the FBI, the previous two programs were Bold Venture and Boston Blackie. And Carl, if you could just give us a very brief background about how those two previous Kickstarters went and how you got access to, to these marvelous discs. Hi, Joe, and welcome, everyone, and thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I just want everyone to know that the reason why we're doing I Was a Communist for the FBI Third is because of you, Joe. You twist, My arm is still hurting. It's in a sling. <laughs> and I know how much you love this series. And there's a lot of series. I think there's about 75 different series that we've licensed directly from the Ziv archives. And Frederick Ziv, as, as most of you uh, people listening to this know, was one of the most prolific syndicators of radio programming of the 40s and 50s. And then, of course, television shows. I was able to license this through Heritage Media, Heritage Media had a, an agreement with the Ziv Estate years ago, and they've been helping to house 10,000-plus discs of these 75-plus series. And I licensed that about a year ago, and we started releasing them one series at a time. We started with Bold Venture. And by the way, these are Ziv's personal discs. They were the first one off the assembly line, and he put them in a paper sleeve and put them on a shelf in a temperature-controlled warehouse so they have either never been played or very seldom have been played. So they're pristine discs. So when we are releasing them, we're releasing them from the first episode to the last episode. With Bold Venture, it was episode one through 78. We're in the process of releasing Boston Blackie, episode one through 218. And now we're about to start with I Was a Communist for the FBI, episode one through 78. You make fun of me for liking the series. I think it is probably the best spy series produced on radio, and it's got a very interesting history to it. Let's start right for, from the beginning. World War II is going on, and there's great concern about offshore influences in the United States from the Communist Party, from Russia, and it's gotten people's attention. They've been concerned about foreign influences since the mid-1930s when, when Europe was having lots and lots of uh, issues. And that's when the House on american Activities Committee was, was created. And then it became a, an official committee uh, in the House of Representatives right after the war. Matt Svetik was from a family from Slovenia living in Pittsburgh. It was a steelworking family, and that was interesting in terms of some of the communist influence because of, of the relationship of the party and, and unions. And Matt Savetic was working on an employment agency, and he was approached by a member of the FBI to join them as an informant and to get involved in the communist party. Savetic was recruited because he did speak some uh, Eastern European languages, so he would kind of fit in. And by 1943, he joined the party and started reporting back to the, the FBI. So he he was not an FBI agent. He, I have a question, Joe. Yes. So was it wasn't just Matt Savetic. It was uh, the our government 
Just oh, one. very many. Yeah. Matt Savetic was a Pittsburgh native, yeah. and his job was to do what he could in the Pittsburgh area. When, when you think of the idea that I was a communist for the FBI run 78 episode, not all that much could be, ha be happening in Pittsburgh to fill <laughs> 78 episodes. So that, yeah. that's one of the things that we that we need to, to put in perspective. Svetik did this as a member of the party for about seven years, and then things started to get a little uh, difficult, so he, he left. And he testified in front of the House of Representatives in 1950, and there was a three-part serialized story about all his years in the Saturday Evening Post. And after that appeared, about two months later, Jack Warner of Warner Brothers bought the story and then the following year, it became a movie with Frank Lovejoy that was actually nominated for an Oscar for Best Documentary. It did not did not win. In promoting the movie and Matt Savetic's involvement, Warner Brothers was sending him around on tour. And in fact, we have a clip of Savetic appearing on The Big Show, introduced by Tallulah Bankhead, after a scene from the movie was reenacted on the radio show with Frank Lovejoy. This is Matt Savetti. I think you do a great job in the picture, Frank. Well, you're the guy who did the great job, Matt, believe me. Well, Frank, maybe you'd better wait until the job is done before we start taking bows. The job is far from finished. We're just beginning to fight back against a deadly ruthless, highly organized, Soviet-controlled conspiracy. So if you've got a lot of fighting yet to do before we can rid ourselves of this greatest threat to the world of free men, we've got to fight, all of us, all the time. Amen to that, Max. <laughs> good fighter, good American. Fred Ziv seeking an opportunity to take advantage of the interest that people had in the movie and also this topic, started to conceive a radio program that could be based on Svetik's experiences. And I Was a Communist for the FBI was born, same title as the movie. I Was a Communist for the FBI. <laughs> Starring Dana Andrews in an exciting tale of danger and espionage, I was a communist for the FBI. From the actual records and authentic experiences of Matt Savetic come many of the incidents in this unusual story. Here is our star, Dana Andrews, as Matt Savetic who for nine fantastic years lived as a communist for the FBI. Nine years of it. Nine years of living behind a mask that made me an outcast among my own people. And from behind that mask, I saw these things happen. It's all in the record. The story and testimony of my nine years as a communist for the FBI. Joe, why do you have such a special interest in this particular period of time? Communism played a role in our family history. A family member in Canada became a very, very well-known, if not notorious, union organizer and a member of the Communist Party. His reputation became so large that with the other members of the family who lived in Pennsylvania, word spread of his union activities and they were not allowed to work in the coal mines in Pennsylvania. Either they couldn't find work or they lost work. So they changed their last name to Webb. He kept his original Polish name. He was so famous that he, when he passed away in the 1950s, his death was covered in a lot of the Canadian newspapers. There was a period of time when World War II started in, in Europe and Britain was involved where he was actually brought to a camp on the border of Ontario and Quebec, where he stayed for many months, I think it was about 18 months, with other uh, people who were rounded up so they couldn't interfere with Canada's activities in, in World War II. Our family name was changed 
because mm -hmm. he was so particularly famous. So it's, it's a very, very interesting period uh, to me. One thing that I still find so very curious is that with the activities of Matt Svetik, that he became so despised by the FBI personnel who felt that he had gone over the line in terms of the publicity and the movie, that they'd really disavowed him. And a lot of the stories that Matt Svetik told about himself were actually pretty dull. So most of the stories that you hear, and I was a communist for the FBI, were developed by the writers. Ziv had some marvelous writers working for him, Jerome Lawrence and Robert Lee, who worked with him on Favorite Story and worked on Broadway. It was a very good group, and they had three other writers with them, notably uh, Bill Hampton, Milton Geiger, and Don Brinkley, who had, were writing in Hollywood, some cases for the Whistler and, and, and other programs. And they uh, hired uh, Dana Andrews to be in the lead role. Andrews has an incredible radio voice. Uh, he had been on Suspense a few times and on other shows. He's an excellent actor. And unlike a lot of Hollywood screen actors, he was also good on radio. This came at a particularly difficult time for Andrews as his Hollywood film career was starting to fade because he had some issues with alcoholism. And I only mentioned that because he went public with that much later in the 1950s and took a very active role in helping people uh, with, with that problem. This show came along at the, at the very right time. It's also occurring during the period of Red Channels, the House investigations. It's before the McCarthy era begins because that was 1953. And you would wonder the relationship that actors had with the FBI and with government institutions like that would, would have them stay away from the series. But Dana Andrews was a very highly recognizable person in the unions in Hollywood and was fighting on behalf of the actors not to be investigated by these channels, that this was a combination of private business and free speech. So actors actually did feel comfortable appearing on the series. And that might be hard for us to understand all these years later, or 70 years later, that they would do that. But some of the voices that you hear in this series are just incredible. But you will hear William Conrad. And you will hear other big name voices, but they're not credited on the show. Only Dana Andrews really got credit. The production value of this series is rather incredible. They were paying $12,000 per episode just to produce it. That's somewhere around $150,000 an episode by the time they had all the staff, the, the orchestra, the music on this series, I think is just marvelous. In today's, in today's dollars. In today's dollars, it's that much. Yeah. So, wow. so this show was costing Ziv more than suspense was, was costing. Wow. Yeah. So he was he was really putting very, very big money into it. Part of it may have been his experience with Bold Venture, how well that went, the most successful syndicated uh, radio program of, of all time. They saw a, a real opportunity here. I was a communist, so the FBI ended up with 600 or so stations, which is a lot. Mm. It was all over the country. Between the publicity for the movie and then the publicity for the uh, radio program. I mean, this was a very, very uh, hot, hot property. And I think sometimes it's, it's unfairly judged because it's, it's a product of that period of time that people lose sight of the program as being extremely entertaining. The stories from a radio perspective are marvelous. When I said it's the best spy series on radio, I meant that. There were other spy series that were usually... Uh, more historical related or, or wartime related. But this was an interesting period. And, and many of the writers could could almost take some of their favorite plot lines, give it a little twist to make it fit this kind of cloak and dagger ap approach and to come out with some some really terrific stories. And I think another part of the series is that the FBI didn't like it. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover wanted to distance the Bureau from Svetik because they didn't want the series or anything else around him to discourage uh, people who may have been working in the field for them or, or make them make it seem like there was more danger and more nefarious adventure that might happen to them and to their families, as, as did with the uh, Sovetic in terms of his family life was basically ruined by this. 
and he did not do well personally you know physically from this he had his own alcoholism problems over the years his psychological situation became so difficult in terms of him surviving that when he finally wrote his big book which was never published by a an actual a publishing house but self-published back in 1959 when people read it they found oh this sounds like some of the plots from the i was a communist series that we know we made scripts of but matt wasn't actually involved in any of these events like this because those kind of events never occurred it would be a shame if people did not appreciate the program as a standalone thing You've had experiences with, with so many different programs over the years. What, what have you found about this particular series for yourself and some of your listeners? When I first heard it, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, it's an interesting title, right? It gets you starting to think, like, what could this possibly be? I mean, I'm sure a lot of our people listening to this are familiar with the series, but maybe some are not. And when I first heard it, I thought, oh, is this going to be really, like, hokey? Is it going to be, you know... And But no, this is a, the writing on this, as you alluded to earlier, the writing on this series is top notch. And Dana Andrews is top notch. Productions are equally top notch. It is, I think, I agree with you, it is the best spy show. It's better than Dangerous Assignment. It's better than Man Called X and some of the others. Oh, for sure. It's a notch above all of those. The stories are tight. And I'll tell you what. You are literally clenching your fists during these these stories because at every turn when the phone rings or when he goes into a meeting, he could have been killed. I mean, he could have been ambushed. They make it sound as if these stories are based on incidents maybe that happened to him or other agents that were working on our behalf, our country's behalf. I think it's seriously one of the best radio dramas of all time. Luckily, we now have every one of the episodes. I think there's several that are uh, missing, you know, in circulation. And certainly the quality, the sound quality of what's out there is not going to be anywhere near what we're going to be able to deliver once we've done all the transfers. But yeah, I love it. And I think it's really, really excellent. Now, speaking of the transfers, Doug Hopkinson is working on these again. And and Doug has a very meticulous process of cleaning the discs and recording them. And the discs are in such good shape, they really don't need a lot of processing other than some very, very straightforward cleaning uh, physically and also in terms of sound. When you listen to some of the circulating I Was a Communist shows that are here now, you hear lots of disc noise, you hear lots of disc scratch, uh, you hear poor joins between the two, the part one disc and the part two disc. As shown from the Bold Venture discs, Having them in that good a sound just changed my appreciation of that series. And it does have a very, very big effect on the enjoyment and and the amount of entertainment that you you get from that. I think I have most all of the the circulating, I was a communist for the FBI. And there are some that are pretty good, but most are not. This will be a gigantic upgrade for those in circulation. And then we'll also have the seven or eight that are not in circulation. So it'll be Episode 1 through 78, the complete run with Dana Andrews. And these are right off the Ziv, personal copies that were never played or seldom played. And there's a little bit more, too, because I, in chatting with Doug, he just received some of the promotional discs that the stations got to promote the series. And I'm not aware of them circulating at all. So that's a new addition to all of this. Yep. What is it that supporters will get? I mean, you have, I know you have different tiers. Some people can get the wave files of the complete series, some a portion. And I know that you're appreciative of whatever people can do, whatever membership level, because it all goes to help keep the, these different Ziv series flowing, especially this one. I'm so glad we made it to, to this one. What yeah. is it that, that they get? Yeah, so we'll have some tiers where you can get maybe the first 25 episodes or half the series or the entire series, along with these promotional discs. And they'll be able to get them in two formats, either digitally or on CD. So with 78 episodes, you would get 39 CDs or, you know, or the, or the digital links. As you said, Doug will close up all the gaps and do a light, a very light processing. So some of the little tiny little clicks and pops are kind of removed. We'll make sure that people 
and collectors and those who support this Kickstarter project will get the absolute best sound quality that you can lift off these discs. Doug's a master at that. He's one of the best in the business. And he's proven himself with the Bold Ventures and Boston Blackie right now. Now, when you say digital files, these are WAV files. These are not yeah. MP3s. These are, these no, are wave. full files. So yeah. you're not getting any kind of compression on them. You're no. getting the actual full sound of it. That's very, very difficult to understand the difference between some of the other file formats and WAV direct from the disc. It, it yep. can be astounding. Yep. Um, where should people go for more information? There will be a Kickstarter page. So the best way is to just uh, go to your search engine and type in, I was a communist for the FBI Kickstarter. I was a communist for the FBI Kickstarter. Or they can call me uh, directly to uh, ask questions. I can help them. Um, I can take an order for them if they have trouble with Kickstarter. And by the way, um, the uh, Bold Venture and Boston Blackie, if you have any questions about those two or if you missed the opportunity to get all the Bold Venture and all the Boston Blackies, call me. And my number is 815-900-7535. That's 815-900-7535. 7535 or you can email me uh carl at classic radio club.com that's carl at classic radio club.com the other thing is if you're on the kickstarter uh, page right now just go to support and uh, click on that it'll it'll take you um through all of the uh information how to how to get i was a communist for the fbi so in the phone number, when you say 900, that's 900, right? Yeah. And yeah. then it's Carl with a C. We yes. always have, because we both know Carl with a K. So it's yeah. Carl with a C. <laughs> <laughs>